When morning came, the terror of the dwarves grew less. They realized that dangers of this kind were inevitable in dealing with such a guardian, and that it was no good giving up their quest yet. But they could think of no way of getting rid of Smaug. Uh, what do you propose we should do, Mr. Baggins? asked Thorin politely. Well, I have no idea at the moment, if you mean about removing the treasure. I have got my ring and will creep down this very noon and see what Smaug is up to. It was dark as night in the tunnel. There was only the very faintest glow to be seen. Old Smaug is weary and asleep, he thought. He can't see me and he won't hear me. Cheer up, Bilbo. He had forgotten or had never heard about Dragon's sense of smell. Smaug certainly looked fast asleep, almost dead and dark, with scarcely a snore more than a whiff of unseen steam when Bilbo peeped once more from the entrance. He was just about to step out onto the floor when he caught a sudden thin and piercing ray of red from under the drooping lid of Smaug's left eye. He was only pretending to sleep. Then Smaug spoke. Well, thief, I smell you and I feel you. I hear your breath. Come, help yourself again. There is plenty. Uh, no, thank you, O oh, Smaug the Tremendous. I did not come for presents. I only wish to have a look at you and see if you were truly as great as tales say. I did not believe them. Didn't you now? Truly, songs and tales fall utterly short of the reality, O oh, Smaug, the chiefest and greatest of calamities. You have nice manners for a thief and a liar. You seem familiar with my name. But I don't seem to remember smelling you before. Who are you? Where do you come from, may I ask? From under the hill, and under the hills, and over the hills, and through the air. I am he that walks unseen. So I can well believe, but that is hardly your usual name. I am the clue finder, the web cutter, the stinging fly. I was chosen for the lucky number. Lovely titles, but lucky numbers don't always come off. I am he that buries his friends alive and drowns them and draws them alive again from the water. I came from the end of a bag, but no bag ever went over me. These don't sound so creditable. I am the friend of bears and the guests of eagles. I am ring winner and luck wearer, and I am barrel rider, went on Bilbo, beginning to be pleased with his riddling. That's better, but don't let your imagination run away with you. This is, of course, the way to talk to dragons, if you don't want to reveal your proper name, which is wise, and don't want to infuriate them by a flat refusal, which is also very wise. No dragon can resist the fascination of riddling talk, and of wasting time trying to understand it. There was a lot here which Smaug did not understand at all, but he thought he understood enough, and chuckled in his wicked inside. I thought so last night, he smiled to himself. Lake men, lake men or I'm a lizard. I haven't been down that way for an age and an age, but I will soon alter that. Very well, O oh barrel rider, you may walk unseen, but you did not walk all the way. Let me tell you, I ate six ponies last night. In return for the excellent meal, I will give you one piece of advice for your good. Don't have more to do with dwarves than you can help. Dwarves? said Bilbo in pretended surprise. Don't talk to me, said Smaug. I know the smell and taste of dwarf. No one better. I suppose you got a fair price for that cup last night. Oh, come, did you? Nothing at all? Well, that's just like them. They are skulking outside, and you do all the dangerous work and get what you can. And you will get a fair share? Don't you believe it? You don't know everything, O oh, Smoke the Mighty. Not gold alone brought us hither. Ah, you admit the us. Why not say us fourteen and be done with it? 
Mr. Lucky Number. I don't know if it has occurred to you that even if you could steal the gold bit by bit, a matter of a hundred years or so, you could not get it very far. What about delivery? What about cartage? What about armed guards and trolls? <laughs> and Smaug laughed aloud. He had a wicked and wily heart, and he knew his guesses were not far out, though he suspected that the lake men of Esgaroth were at the back of the plans. I tell you that gold was only an afterthought with us. We came over hill and under hill by wave and wind for revenge. Then Smaug really did laugh, a devastating sound which shook Bilbo to the floor, while far up the tunnel the dwarves huddled together and imagined the hobbit had come to a sudden and a nasty end. Revenge, he blasted. Revenge. The king under the mountain is dead. Gillian, lord of Dale, is dead. And where are his son's sons that dare approach me? I kill where I wish, and none dare resist. I laid low the warriors of old, and their like is not in the world today. No thief in the shadows. I am indestructible. My breath is death. I have always understood, said Bilbo in a terrified squeak, that dragons were softer underneath, especially in the region of the, uh, chest. The dragon stopped short in his boasting. Your information is antiquated, he snapped. I am armored above and below with iron scales and hard gems. No blade can pierce me. I might have guessed it, said Bilbo. Truly, there can nowhere be found the equal of Lord Smaug the Impenetrable. What magnificence to possess a waistcoat of fine diamonds. Yes, it is rare and wonderful indeed. Look, what do you say to that? Dazzlingly marvelous, perfect. Flawless! Staggering! exclaimed Bilbo aloud, but what he thought inside was, Old fool, why, there is a large patch in the hollow of his left breast as bare as a snail out of its shell. After he had seen that, Mr. Baggins' one idea was to get away. Well, I must not detain your magnificence any longer. Uh, ponies take some catching, I believe. And so do burglars, he added as a parting shot, as he darted back and fled up the tunnel. It was an unfortunate remark, for the dragon spouted terrific flames after him. Never laugh at the brave dragon, little bunny, you fool, he said. The dwarves took care of him and doctored his scorches as well as they could, asking eager questions. <laughs>